Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Nope, which is a sci-fi movie by Jordan Peele. I was really kind of excited about this in the sense that I don't look for spoilers and stuff like that, but, you know, when you hear about a film and it's something that uh, interests you, the whole theme of this is just fun for me because I have a friend we discuss ufo stuff every once in a while but this is a you know like a sci-fi horror type movie um i enjoy it but there is there's a, there's things in here that um don't sit well with me but i'll discuss that as we go along so as i said this is a movie directed written and produced by jordan peele I did like one of his other movies. I'm not a like I don't know how I don't think he's made that many, you know, theatrical movies. And I was I was actually into it. Really, really into it. So like I said, overall I enjoyed the movie. But I was really into it in the beginning and then they add the sister character and getting into the actors, uh, you know, Danielle uh, Kalua, Kiki Palma, Stephen Yoon, Michael Wincott. There's nothing exactly wrong, but I'm going to just say for me that my impression is the director was changing his mind on how he wanted the tone to be. Because I was actually really into it until the sister shows up. And then there's um, this... this clash of attitude and tone and the brother sister type thing it didn't work for me and i found just an annoying presence throughout the movie where i would have rather have dealt with um either one if they were situated in a different um if they were like maybe flipped in their position so it's, it's the you know the, the sister who's a more serious um more introverted type you know anyway you got to struggle with this family they're um horse uh trainers and they're used for like commercials and then i, I can kind of see that there's a hollywood uh production and they needed horses on the set all right who are we gonna call and you call them their company and they have to do with their father and his death and then leading into how are we gonna get this uh horse training company to be making a profit type thing and um there's uh the guy from walking dead he's pretty cool and uh steven yoon and there's this thing like he's selling his horses he doesn't want to sell the horses he's got to sell the horses because you know he's not the business is not booming i think they get fired from one of the jobs um and, and through this, the background story starts coming up about the brother and sister and their father. And I'm not drawn in. I'm not, I don't, there's something grating to me about it. This happens from time to time where maybe it's the way my brain is working. I'm like really set into it, the tone of it, the pacing. And uh, I guess we call uh, Daniel's portrayal of, what is his name? I'm sorry, OJ. A junior or something. All right, let me look because you know I'm sure I'm so prepared and my my staff is you know waving arms at me and stuff. Um, yeah, Otis, I I like this performance, but there's some weird points in here where I'm not sure what's going on. If the director's trying to say you're so deeply wounded or you're so in the past with your father and now, you know, losing your company sort of thing. There's just something weird about his... And by the way, I love him as an actor and things. I, You know, you recognize him immediately. So I'm going to go with a director's feel in that I didn't connect with some of the portrayals of his emotions or what he was thinking, what the character's motivations are. Because by the time the sister gets in and they find out, uh-oh, there might be aliens involved in all this. And then the movie trans you know, transfers into, we got to get evidence of aliens. And 
Then we get to, you know, like the end act, which is kind of ridiculous in a sense. But, you know, you want to watch a fun, you know, sci-fi movie about aliens visiting and what they might or might not be doing. I'm all for it. And again, I, and overall, I enjoyed the movie. But I don't know if I'm watching this again and again. And by that, I mean, I'm glad I watched it. It's an um, interesting film. It's got um, lots of things going for it. Like I said, it hooked me right from the beginning. You got the premise, boom, I'm in. The way it started and the way um, it depicted uh, Daniel's character, for you know, and what was going on. I was actually there. And, you know, what Otis Jr. is doing with the company and the sister coming in. Then I'm starting to get a little distracted and a little not caring about things. I don't find it believable. But maybe it is, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. And the way things are going and the... And then all of a sudden, they're super passionate about discovering in aliens. Now, granted, if you follow the story, there's a subplot with... Stephen Yoon's character, who's a survivor of a tragedy on film. There was a uh, a, ch- a kid's show back in the day, and it started a chimpanzee, I think. Uh, I could be getting the species wrong, maybe it's a monkey, in some sense, whatever. Uh, yeah, I think it was a chimpanzee. And on the set one day, the chimpanzee kills everybody but the kid, Stephen Yoon. Alright, this blending of what's going on there and the personality quirks of the characters we're dealing with it starts to lose cohesion for me there are elements in here that i I don't just don't i just don't find um myself believing in it's almost like i'm waiting just going in my brain what's the director going to do next like what's his purpose here in this blueprint or framework for a film beginning middle end act and some directors will throw that in the air with like quentin tarantino and do things non-linearly and you know edit things in certain ways this movie maybe could have benefited from that for me uh, look it could be making billions i don't know it's it's got that thing but there's something from t- saying i love this movie uh i want to love this movie but this stuff stopped me and it's present throughout this almost the whole movie and even when they, they got this guy who's from uh um a tech guy right so right so here's, here's a layout right oh, i'm gonna i want this business to keep going the son uh, otis jr is dedicated to the company his sister is not after things go bad you know you want to sell the farm to this guy or whatever the horses and the sister is getting involved and trying to put her little flavor into it and i'm already distracted because i'm not comfortable or happy with you know where the movie's starting to go with the sister and the brother type thing i would have wanted it a more quiet movie just on otis anyway so when things get uh revealed to them or they have their aha moment they've got they determined well we're going to get evidence of this because this is bullshit right fine go to the tech guy and then it feels like they got an amateur actor and i'm sorry for the actor's name I just kept going, why did someone get him? And from my really recent deep dives from watching Twin Peaks, uh, you know, David Lynch stuff, I can see why you might want somebody who kind of looks like they're not a good actor, if maybe that's the portrayal. Again, I think this is director direction issues for me. Because I got a feeling people are going to like this movie. This is not like, um, you know, me. um, And it's probably a movie I would recommend. It's just not rewatchability for me which is weird because i've rewatched all sci-fi movies and i love the little plot things and all this you know geekiness this misses out on that and i get it that they're, they're telling the story it's a you know several subplots it's a father a legacy and <clears throat> you know how it his legacy is go, going through his company and his family with his horses and then there's this uh uh Black people being taken from their historical achievements in film to a uh, child star surviving a chimpanzee, killing the whole cast, and by the way, being killed at, at the end of that little 
its own 50 show flashback you get this tech guy who's now involved and he's just off-putting and not gelling in like he's trying to be a real tech guy it's like i don't know what what kind of flavor jordan peele's trying to put into this but i think people are gonna like it. it's just not for me and then they bring in the film guy and this is where like in a normal sci-fi or a horror movie they contact vincent d'onofrio right on skype and he tells you like oh oh it's the daughter's curse and and you kind of find things out no they need this because he can film and he can get it on film and i just found it fucking stupid i love the actor you know uh i think his name is uh michael wincott and i love his performance in almost everything but what the fuck this movie which hinges on this brother sister relationship and the determination to kind of write their father's legacy or keep it alive to figuring out hey we got aliens visiting us and this is fucking crazy i think they really should have nailed the film's title catch in the movie because it glanced over it and there's a part where he's in um, your spoilers and he's in his truck and the fucking spaceship's like right over him and he looks out and he goes nope 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 and, like, and it was a really good scene but he should have really punched that which is why I think we should have focused more on him and what's going on. I don't like the antics with the sister. And, all right, so you got to get this fucking director who can catch anything on film. And the whole premise is like, I get it if, you know, in the sci-fi movies, you get the guy with the special tech and stuff. So he comes, okay, with a crankable camera that can't be affected by electricity because we know UFOs and their technology could fuck with our uh, electricity and uh, our appliances and cars they shut off it's a main it's a little theme in here where you know when they come do something it's like an emp goes off and things shut down for a while or until it moves maybe it has like a you know fucking force field thing around it and he comes and they got to catch the moment and the movie sort of loses me it just is well done in certain circumstances I think the editing could have been better, but the, the, the end film is the monumental capturing of this thing on film and, and what they have to do to get it on film. And, and you're intertwining the plot from Stephen Yoon's character, the, um, what's his name in the fucking movie? Because it's like, oh, uh, Ricky Jew Park, uh, whatever. He's... You know, his storyline, and I'm not finding the gel that really makes a really great movie. I'm not finding the um, the things that highlight to me that make me feel a certain emotion, and it carries me through, through the arc that it's meant to, and then how I'm supposed to go up, and my downs, and my hills and valleys. I think this movie's a little confused, uh... Or maybe it's a new way of doing film and it's, I'm not, you know, I'm getting old. <laughs> but this is sci-fi. This is like right up my alley. Aliens, UFOs. It just got me right from the premise. And I think when you get somebody right from the premise, they're, they're right for you. They, I am waiting for this. Now, again, I enjoyed the film and what it does. And I might even recommend it. But for me, when the movies like this sci-fi, geekness, and all the UFO, they get put in like a replay mode in my head, like a playlist that, that, that plays. So I get the feeling like, again, this is one of those things I talk about sometimes when I do my podcast. Is it more of a, this is something that just isn't for me or it's going to do really well. But I find a lot of flaws in this movie that don't, make it great for me and if i had to be the critic i would say it's not a great movie because i think you can people better than me can actually you know dissect this and explain why instead of being a bumbling schmuck from brooklyn new york and smoking his weed and putting his you know thoughts into these podcasts but i enjoy these things this is a part of my life that really lets me escape and be creative and you know it gets my own 
juices flowing with these type of things, and I'll add little nuances to my role-playing and my writings. And I think that's what it comes down to with this, that this could be one of those, it's not for me, I might have done it a different way, and you might have a team telling me, no, we have to do this. Let's interject a little bit of this. Because once I get into this set, and maybe it's a, it's a problem with me, and a problem, but, you know, it's the way I did. When I started watching this movie and I started getting into the mindset, I really wanted to focus on a introverted, quiet, um, sci-fi horror movie that becomes a spectacle. And to me, when the sister shows up, she's a spectacle, and it starts drawing me away from where my... You know, my passion was going with the movie, where my interests and drives were. And it grinds it to a halt for me. And is there enough of those things that I say is a bad movie? No. It's just more, not for me, you know. People probably having a ball with some of the things that are going on and the portrayals of attitudes and emotions at times. And it's, a, you know. But I really enjoyed uh, Daniel's performance and his you know portrayal of Otis Jr., and where this movie might have actually went. Again, that could be a flaw. It could be the way my brain works and me fancying myself a writer or... I don't know. But you captivated me. You got me in from the premise. And then the movie's on and I'm in and I'm, you know, ripe. I'm immersed. And then I'm not. And then you got a fucking tech guy you get involved. And you got this fucking... Uh, you know, mysterious uh, fucking director who has to come in. And it's like, I don't care too much. It just loses my, you know, oh, my, my, I don't know, subversion, you know, whatever the fuck it is that makes me sit in this movie and realize, holy shit, you know, an hour and 45 minutes went by. Like, where did the time go? Like, holy shit. I, I get it, and, and this is the aspect of um, movies that captivate me. And I can't say really us, because we're all different. And I might just chalk that, this movie up to that. Nope. I don't feel the love and the joy of watching it again. And I'm wondering, is this me? Is it just, um, well, no, there are movies I love that come out, and maybe I'm just keyed for certain formulas. You know, we're all fucking human whatever the fuck's doing that shit but it's a little disappointing because these are the movies that i want to be immersed in and i did a uh, thing on a movie called i think it was cosmos or something like that it was fucking excellent low budget movie made by like brothers i think and it took them like six years it's outstanding recommend it just love it and i don't feel that with this. I want to be immersed in this UFO. Like, who doesn't, right? Do we all have these visions or dreams or ideas of what's out there? You know, what's it doing? Are they coming here? Are they taking out fucking cows or horses in this instance? What is this connection between humanity and, you know, or uh, dreams or curiosity about what's out there? Then, boom, it's here. And you got a normal family you know just a normal this isn't um you know really by the book directed acted type stuff and it's fine but i think there comes a balance you have to recognize when you're looking at whatever they call them dailies or your returns and you're going through the performances i, I the, the mood sets the pacing it just doesn't work all the way for me and i think this is more of something that should have been for me Great, loving it and promoting it and recommending it everywhere. I don't get that. I get a missed opportunity for me. What could have been a really fun, interesting UFO movie. And I'm telling you right now, I'm looking at my thumbnail that I'm going to use. If you take out the fucking sister, the tech guy. You would have you would have had me better. And I don't mean take them totally out. Let's say readdress their motivations, their attitudes through the movie. And I would probably, you know, I don't know. Like, like I said, this is just 
you know, you're excited, you watch a movie, you like see the things you love in it, the whole premise, and then it doesn't gel right. Again, these are one of those, this is one of those things. Do you recommend? Yeah, I recommend Nope. I think people are going to enjoy it. I just disagree with things that sort of make it a non-rewatchable experience, and that's a big thing for me. And it's also a big thing when you got that spur in a moment, and you do you have someone to watch a movie with? And oh, what are you going to put on? All right, so I'll watch the thing again. Well, fucking 1984, whatever it is, and. I'm going to love it. I'm going to show it to people. I'm going to watch it. Those movies that stay in our um, memories and then they're timeless. They're rare. And I think this could have been one of them. And I think that's another part of this that I should, you know, at least make clear. This could have been, for me, a great movie. And I see, again, someone could tell me, oh, Joe, it is a great movie. Even if you want to get critical about it. Fine, but it doesn't work for me on all levels. This movie could have been and should have been for me rewatching, sitting around with people watching it, talking about it with people, and it's not going to hit that mark. Get the fucking tech guy out of the fucking movie. Well, if not, it'll change him up a little bit. Take the sister's um, energy and level it out on certain things. And a fucking director with a crankable camera, so it doesn't get affected by it. Pretty cool, in a way, you know, because it always happens in movies for different genres, right? But, here we are. Jordan Peele, I'm not a big, you know, info buff on what he's done. I'm going to, you know, say I did like uh, Get Out. But he's got his roots in TV, you know, and stuff talent up the air like he's just talented fuck i get it but i don't know if this is like um one of those moments in a director's uh growth because it has a potential for greatness i I see it and then again this is one of those things where i'm not here to shit on the movie it's i'm gonna i recommend it and i guess i don't know you got a lot of um Potential, a lot of talent here. You know, like I said, his roots coming from TV or sketch comedy, um, being hired to do things. Uh, probably a huge success story. Ta- I mean, the talent is there. Ah, you know, I just really, really liked Get Out. And, um, fuck, the movie was great. This is. There's, there's evidence of greatness, and I just see these things as personal, I guess. Uh, you know, make it better for me. <laughs> this is what you, you, my fucking channel, my huge audience. Look at my subscribers. Look at all the likes and stuff I get. You want to please me, okay? So I get it. You know, I, I know my role in all this, but I'm just going to, you know, tell my truth in quotes and. This is how I feel when I'm going through these movies. I am constantly reminded in this movie of the joy of being a kid and my love of geekness. So that's why I'm going to say I recommend this movie. It's got elements of it and it's really trying to do something a little new but keep it really uh, grounded and you know put his little flavor on it and I'm fine with it. But I don't see the huge rewatchability. I don't see the captivation to constantly think about it and stuff and i think that's where he was going and for me that's a missed opportunity now that could be exactly what most people are thinking and what most people are um taking from this movie i get it i just i don't know um you know it, maybe it is more of me just wishing it was more for me In the end, I think he's going to get the right kind of praise for this. I mean, like I said, I don't know him that well, but his talent is fucking evident. Do I have to go back and watch him on uh, uh, Mad TV? Probably not. I'm just going to assume that I've seen him in that stuff and just don't connect him to being a director director. But there's an aspect of Get Out that's amazing, and there's an aspect of this that's really good. I just don't see it all clicking together 
this maybe needed some, you know, I don't know, magician in the editing room or someone to take someone who has the writing, directing, and producing credits and say, hey, I, th- I think this is, this could be fucking great. Let's smooth this out here. Let's level this steep up and then take that dive off into, you know, spectacular stuff going on and bombastic things and characters that are like bigger than life you know and that's the thing when you get because to me this guy's down to earth oh this is like he's like every person and i don't think blending that in right with other things is the correct formula it didn't make the you know didn't make my gumbo taste good it just has elements but i'm gonna recommend this everybody watch nope it's got a good twist on it it's got a um a through line that really really interesting to me like i said i think we've all been captivated by what's out there ufos especially now we got the pandemic and the government revealing things about what's going on and uaps now and oh we might have all the documents and stuff unsealing stuff and it's a great time to have this movie out here and reignite our imaginations we've got space faring um entrepreneurs now and private companies doing things and nasa great telescopes that are letting us see insane things black holes being like we are in that age and this movie should have been the staple of holy shit what if aliens are real and they're visiting and they're doing nefarious shit and uh, you know and then you put it into a western type well not a western but you know they're horse trainers and wranglers and it's a family thing and it means a lot to them and it has a rich history with uh american film and there's this you know the message that's being sent and I get it. I just wish it was just put together a little better, in my opinion. But, nope. A film directed, written, and produced by Jordan Peele. Oh, who is it? Ian Cooper also was a producer. It's starring Daniel Kalua, which I like. Kiki Palmer, I could have done with a different direction. Stephen Yoon, Michael Wincott, Brandon Perea. And I just think this combination just didn't make the perfect, uh, you know, spice for me. And I think it's recommended. I'm really um, interested in this director and his, um, like I said, this could be his growth. And I'm here talking about, like, I'm critiquing this. And, you know, that's all I could do is just give you my perspective on things and, you know. I don't know. Maybe he'll hear this and like correcting. Maybe it'll be their director's cut. Because that's what I think is important in this day and age with these type of movies. This is what in the uh, back in the day, but you always were looking for that director's cut. Now, I would be interested in this director's cut. Because, like I said, it's all there for me. I enjoyed the movie. But could this movie have been great? Could it have been a staple of the times? Like Get Out sort of is? I'm not savvy enough to know all that stuff. So, I hope everybody gives it a shot. That I will definitely recommend. Watch Nope. Alright, well, I hope everybody's doing well. I wish the best for you and yours. I'll talk to you all later.